racial thinking obscures the connections between peoples and is non-evolutionary, ahistorical, and is something that we can do away with. It still lurks beneath a lot of commentary even when the term race is not used. Please forgive me if I'm redundant. The African world is a large place. have to ask ourselves one question in terms of its people. So Jean Ernaux in 1974 says, in sub-Saharan Africa, many anthropological characters show a wide range of variation, population means and frequencies. In some of them, the whole of the world range is covered in subcontinent. Here live the shortest and the tallest human populations, the one with the highest and the one with the lowest nose, the one with the thickest and the one with the thinnest lips in the world. In this area, the range of average nose widths covers 92% of the world range. Only a narrow range of extremely low means are absent from the African record. Means for head diameters cover about 80% of the world range. 60% is the corresponding value for a variable once cherished by a physical anthropologists named the cephalic index, and he goes on to talk about serological traits that are also are highly variable, uh, aspects of fingerprints that are highly variable. These are the classical traits that anthropologists used at one time. Uh, some still do. Uh, of course, now we have DNA, and DNA diversity is also known to be extremely great in Africa. He, he asked the following questions. Uh, he says, confronted with such a wide variation, biological characters in the native populations of sub-Saharan Africa, and to be frank with the stereotyped idea that most of us have about what a true African looks like, one is inclined to ask whether all of this diversity originated in sub-Saharan Africa. If not, how much of it was a result of gene flow? So I want to start by talking about some of the phenotypic variation that we see in Africa. This is an example of skin melanin levels or skin pigmentation. So the higher the value here, the darker the skin color. And I want to just make the point that we see a lot of variation in skin pigmentation uh, levels across diverse Africans. So let me first tell you about the levels of genetic variation that we saw, and that's indicated by the height of this bar. And I've color-coded this by geographic region. So shown in orange are people from Africa, and as nearly every study has shown, Africans have the highest level of genetic variation. And then we see decreasing variation as we move west to east across Eurasia into East Asia, Oceania, and the Americas.
from a 